people need to have places like this. You know, it's the expansion of the country has pushed people to fringe areas. And it has, you know, so in a way there's this sense of, am I the last person to be able to build an adobe earthen structure because everything has become very formal. I remember when I first came to Arizona in early 97, I was so excited to be here that every weekend I would just find a different place on the map. And mostly like the remote, remote, some remote places, I'm gonna go there. I just had this feeling, this gut feeling that, because I knew, like I said, I knew its location on the map and it was a protected area with the wildlife refuge and the national forest and surrounding the town and federal lands and private lands and things. But um, coming from the sprawl of Phoenix or something, I said, this, this is where, this would be a great place for outdoor recreation. And so as soon as I got to Arvac, I just had that sense that and then 30 days later, I owned a piece of land in that town. That's how. That's how I. Uh, that's how fast I moved on that. I said, I got to. I got to be here. So you had, the more rocks you had, the more options you had to solve the puzzle, so to speak, in the wall. The studio was built on a rubble trench footing, which is 18 inches deep and two feet wide of river rock. And then there's a stem wall that comes three feet high that comes off the, that rubble trench footing. And, and that's, that's over 60 ton of rock went into building just the, the foundation basically of the building, which is all floating on this rubble trench footing. So, you know, if there was seismic activity under the ground, the ground would move and the building, the, the, the rock would act as like a ball bearing and support the building. I've been really conscious since I got the land. I felt I feel responsible for it. I think about, you know, the Apaches were here at one time. Just not too long ago, this was part of Mexico. 
this, they walked over this land. So, I mean, I, have a, I, I do feel a responsibility for the land. You know, through the wash, I see tracks sometimes. And I say, good, if I've got a roadrunner hanging around or, you know, i got tarantulas that come out in the summer, the summer months. And it's like, when I see any type of insect or wildlife on the property, I look at that as a good thing that I have provided an environment that allows that creature to be here. There's a supply chain of, of nature, you know, that, that's working. Of all the things I think we take for granted, I think the sun, the power from the sun is, is, is the biggest thing we take for granted. Getting your energy from the sun, you know, transmuting that energy from the, the solar radiation into usable power. $40,000 for a car instead of buying a $40,000 car why not buy a $20,000 car and put the other $20,000 into solar panels and be basically energy free I mean the idea that to have all the power I need generated from the sun after an initial expense it's really a sense of empowerment it's like that feeling of independence I've seen all the different methods, but to me the cob is the most elegant and uh, stylistic material because you can shape with it. It's just basically, you know, straw impregnated mud, which is the clay. Very strong. All this leads itself to using the materials that are right at hand, which fortunately on my land is clay and sand. I call cob nature's fiberglass. It, it takes time for the the heat from the sun to get through the clay and yet in addition you have the straw which is an insulator. It's got incredible strength and it's very workable. Building's been going on over 10 years now but along that time I've, I've come across things you know that are new ideas that I can incorporate into the building. The dome, the whole idea for the dome was only recent, you know. I mean, I've been working on a dome for over a year now, but I would say I, I didn't start thinking about the dome until about two years ago, two or three years ago. I mean, I, originally for that for that circular room, I was just going to put beams across, you know, vicas, and make a flat roof, you know. And then I said, you know what, this is my chance. This is the one chance I'm probably going to have to build a, a dome. I got the structure. It's a solid, you know, mostly stone structure, uh, very thick walls. I said, "This is this is the time to build the dome." I said, "You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a shot," and I'm so glad I did because, I mean, I'm ecstatic with how the dome has come out. I'm glad I built that dome, man, because that is just gonna be one cool room to hang out in. For me, this was the spot, the land with the clay made it perfect for natural building. Of course, you got the sun for, for off-grid power. I, I have a book called Building Underground, and I, and I have a little stamp in, it, in the inside cover, and it says 1983 on it, and that's when I got the book. So I'm thinking, wow, that was the first year out of college. So I've been thinking about this whole idea of using earth or building in the earth since that time. 14 years later, it kind of came to fruition when I arrived in Aravaca. 
That's how this whole kind of project got underway. And the properties that I own and, and maintain that are conventional homes, I think of how many trips to the hardware store can I go to get the right type of screw or it's, it's just the reduction of materials is, is extraordinary and, and it's and of course it's healthy too. I think the elegance with cob, with strong clay, is that's your that's your building, you know? There's no two by fours, no sheet rock, no insulation, no nails, no paint. I mean it's just it's basically fireproof, bulletproof, seismic resistant. You know, even repels radiation to some extent with all the clay in there. But the repair a uh, uh, cob, I mean, it's just so easy. It's just mix up some mud and straw and just put it on the wall. It's just like if there was any type of uh, damage to a wall for, I don't know what even would cause it, you know, because it's so strong. You know, you just mix some mud up and patch the wall. I've been on the property now for 19, 18, 19 years. It's a long-term commitment. And I think that's important today. I think everybody needs to have a project, a goal, whatever you want to call it, a passion that is a long-term commitment. Um, simply to remind yourself that there's enjoyment in doing something over a long period of time.